If you've watched my previous videos, you may have become familiar with the layout of the table and these shelves behind me. I used to have my TI-99 spread out across this table here with all the sidecars lined up. And I still have my TI-99, it's just moved up a notch and all the sidecars are still hooked up and it does still all work. Uh, and I've moved my uh, signal generator down to here as well as my vacuum tube voltmeter. And you notice that I have kind of an open spot right here. And that open spot is in anticipation of a purchase that I recently made on eBay. I've been using the oscilloscope a lot lately for testing various things. And while I love a modern oscilloscope, there's tons of features that are indispensable. I really wanted to get my hands on an old vacuum tube powered oscilloscope. Uh, so I kind of kept an eye out on eBay, and uh, while the ultimate goal is to get my hands on an old Tektronix, I did keep an eye out for any other manufacturers that were making old oscilloscopes like that. And I came across one that I thought was really cool looking, and it was a uh, Telequipment D52. And I threw out a cheap bid on it, and I won it. So <laughs> awesome. Now I have a... a a, a vacuum tube powered oscilloscope. So uh, let's hop over to the bench and take a look at it and then maybe we can get it into its spot here when we're done. So here it is in all of its 60 year old glory. It's in remarkably good shape for how long this thing has been around. All of the knobs have a wonderful feel to them. All of the buttons have a nice click to them. Nothing really seems broken. There's a small chip on the shroud around the CRT here. But other than that, it's in remarkably beautiful condition. It's also relatively small for a tube powered oscilloscope and I'm really impressed with the size that they managed to get out of one of these. Uh, so what I want to do today is I want to take a look at the inside of it and maybe we can kind of figure out what's going on and then we'll power it up and maybe see if we can get some waveforms showing up on it. And here it is with uh, the cover taken off and man, it is just beautiful inside of there. There's two PCBs. There's this one here on the bottom and then you can see the other PCB on the back. And uh, we'll flip this around and take a look at that other PCB here in a minute. Uh, but I've been looking at the inside of this and digging through the schematic, which I, I happen to have right here on my little uh, tablet. And I'm starting to kind of figure out what's doing what. You can see here that we have essentially four uh, vacuum tubes in a line and then another four vacuum tubes in a line on the back half. And this PCB is actually the vertical amplifier. And because this is a dual trace oscilloscope, we've got two vertical amplifiers. And each vertical amplifier has four ECC88 tubes, which are dual triode tubes. And these all appear to be made by uh, Brimmer. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. But uh, since they're all the same and haven't been changed, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that the tubes in this have never been changed. Now, what's really interesting is that if we look at the schematic for the vertical amplifier, we'll notice that each vertical amplifier uses two transistors. So this is actually a, a really late vacuum tube piece of equipment, which is, I think, also why they're using PCBs here instead of the standard freeform design that we usually see on old vacuum tube equipment. Uh, and it being really late means that it's kind of a hybrid and that it's actually got some transistors in it. But I did a lot of searching around on the top of the PC board here, and I, I couldn't find the transistors until I rotated this and looked at the bottom side. Uh, now, I don't know how well the camera's gonna be picking this up, but you can see there's four transistors, one right up underneath this rail here, and then two, three, and four. And so the four transistors are actually stuffed on the bottom side of the PC board. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there was a particular reason why they did that. Maybe they wanted to keep them away from the heat of the tubes, but a uh, part of me wants to believe they did it because transistors aren't as cool looking as tubes, so they hit them on the bottom so you couldn't see them. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true at all. I'm sure there's a proper engineering reason they did this. 
And then behind our PC board, we can see the huge transformer here that supplies all the different volts that are used throughout this. And uh, of course, we have our giant CRT up here. All right, well, let's flip it around and take a look at the other side. All right, look at this board. What a cool looking board. And when we were looking at it from the backside, we could see the hand drawn traces, but it's just a single sided PC board. So we don't see any of the traces on the top. We just have a bunch of through hole components. And then we have our collection of tubes up here. Now, uh, these aren't ECC 88s like the other side. Uh, as a matter of fact, these right here on the top are ECF 80s, which I believe are a triode pentode combo. So if we look through the schematic, we can see that there's quite a lot going on on this single PC board. As a matter of fact, all of the tubes and pretty much this entire two thirds of the PC board are for the trigger circuit and the time base circuit. So essentially for our, our X axis, while the other side are the amplifiers for the Y axis. And then on this remaining third is the power supply circuit and the CRT circuit. And uh, the, the main giveaway for the CRT circuit is that we have these two little neon bulbs here, and they're actually used in the CRT circuit, which we can see on the schematic. So there we go. You can see it's absolutely beautiful in here. Now, I really want to fire it up with the case off so I can look at the tubes glowing because I just think that's going to look awesome. But I have to be very careful because uh, you can see that e even written here on the PC board, it says uh, 1070 volts AC, 2.6 kilovolts over here. There is a massive amount of voltage floating around inside this case. So it is 100% not recommended to turn this thing on with the case off of it. It's very, very dangerous. If I put my fingers in there while it's running, it could knock me across the room or even kill me. But the reason I'm doing this is so that you guys don't have to. So I'm going to plug it in with the case off of it and take some cool beauty shots of the tubes glowing. Uh, and we'll see if we can get a waveform out of it. All right, so we've got my oscilloscope turned around and uh, set up and ready to go here. And uh, you may notice that I've got my wide range oscillator over here and I've actually got the uh, case off of it. And uh, th there's no reason why the case is off of it. I just thought it would look cool to have both of these sitting on the bench with the case off of them while they were running. The vacuum tubes were glowing. And so I, I literally only did it because I thought it would look neat. Um, so after they're both on and warmed up and the tubes are glowing, we'll take some beauty shots and uh, bask in it. But I, I highly do not recommend doing this because there's a lot of high voltage floating around in there. And so I'm only, I'm only going to be touching the stuff that's on the very front panel here and uh, making sure that my hands don't go past this line right here. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Now the CRT on this is quite old and so I have to really crank the brightness to max to get a signal to show up here. All right, well, you can see we had some life there. Oh, there we go. Now we've got a signal showing up. It's, it's coming back up to the center here. Uh, that's, yeah, that's our upper trace. And so th this is a dual trace oscilloscope, so there should be one more trace in there. Let's see if we can find the lower trace. Oh, there it goes. There it is. All right, so we've got our two traces showing. Uh, but I've only got a, an adapter to go from this really old school style probe input to a modern input. I've only got one adapter, so we're only going to be using the upper trace on this one. So I'll just move the lower trace out of the way. Uh, now, before we hook up to my oscillator here, there's a little calibration port down here that goes uh, 0.5 volts peak to peak. And so if I plug my probe into that, I should get something displaying on here. All right, well, we can see that we, we do indeed have something. Let's change our scale here to something a little more representative. Um, our, all right, well, we're, we're quite zoomed in on our time scale here, but you can see that we've got a pretty solid uh, square wave going on here. And you can see that th this being zero and then 0 0.5 volts per division. So 0 0.5 volts, 0 0.5 volts, that's, that's pretty good. Um, let's, let's change our time scale here. There we go. There we go. That's a pretty nice square wave going on there. And it seems to be really well calibrated. Uh, now you can see a bit of flicker in it, and that's because our time scale is getting slow enough that we're starting to notice the, the beam tracing from left to right across the screen. As a matter of fact, the more I slow it down, the more prominent that becomes. 
you can really start to see it there. <laughs> now it's painfully obvious. If we go even slower, yeah, you can see it, it's just drawing from left to right. We can slow it right on down. As a matter of fact, I think I have one more step. There we go. It's just barely moving across the screen. All right, well, that's cool. That, that's working pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, well, let's go ahead and hook up to our oscillator here. I'll set it to uh, 1,000 hertz. That should be one kilohertz. So we'll unhook our probe here, and we'll, we'll hook it up to our, our oscillator here. All right, well, you can see a couple things. Uh, first of all, our time scale is going to be way off because 1,000 hertz is, is much faster than what our calibration port was here. And also, it's trying to draw this way off of there. So I've got the, the voltage, the amplitude on this uh, oscillator set uh, a bit higher than what this was. So we'll, we'll readjust this. There we go. That's, that's using the majority of the screen. We can come down one more step, uh, and that looks pretty good as well. So we'll, we'll go ahead and leave it at 2 volts per division. And then we'll bump our time base up. Well, there we go. We can see that's, that's pretty steady. Let's, let's bump up one more notch there. Yeah, there we go. We can go one more. There we go. That's a pretty good looking sine wave. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, well, let's, let's crank up the speed a little bit. I think we're, we're at 1,000 hertz now. Let's go up to, uh, let's say, 6,000 hertz. There we go, that's 6,000 hertz, and we can bump up another two time scales on this thing, and there we go, look at that, rock steady sine wave. That's beautiful. And we can change our, our uh, voltage scale here, so we get a, we're using more of the CRT. Man, that, looks, that just looks epic. I am super happy with the way that that is displaying. All right, well, let's, let's, let's go real fast, all right? So let's, Let's go ahead and bump this up to 100,000 hertz, so 100 kilohertz here. Uh, we have to keep cranking our time scale up here. Uh, but you can see, there we go, that's at a, a 100 kilohertz, and that seems to be reading pretty well. And that time scale says it's uh, 5 microseconds per division, so that's 5 microseconds right there. Um, let's, let's max out our oscillator here. Let's go all the way up until this thing bottoms out. Now that should be 700 kilohertz. And you can see it's actually still picking it up and triggering pretty well. Uh, we can go up one, two more notches. Now that is the fastest that this will read. That is one microsecond per division. You can see, so we've got one microsecond per division. Now I can kind of shift my X here so that it, it crosses the center right there. And well, there we go. You can see it's reading 700,000 hertz with no problem. Okay, well, we've got the oscillator going as fast as it can go. Let's, let's go slow. Let's bring this back down. There's 100,000 hertz. There's 1,000 hertz. So let's bring our time scale right on up. And you can see it's reading 1,000 hertz just fine. Let's, uh, let's go down to 100 hertz. There we go. We can start to see a little bit of flicker there because our time scale is getting real slow. Uh, so let's let's crank this up to here and we'll go down to there. That's 60 hertz. So that's uh, 60 cycles per second. And now you can really start to see the flicker when I do it that way. Look at that. So let's go slower. There's 40 hertz. 20 hertz, 10 hertz, that's a real interesting pattern, and 5 hertz, so that's 5 cycles per second. Let's slow this thing right on down. There we go. Now look at that, it's moving left to right so slow we can actually just see the dot, but we can see that it's very clearly following the sine wave. That's awesome. We can slow it down even more. And you get a real cool wiggle across there. Let's go uh, one more notch. And even one more. Now this is 500 milliseconds per division. So from one division across zero to the next division is one second. 
And you can see that the, the beam traces off the edge of the screen and then restarts over here and continues tracing. So we've, we've got a bit of dead space in here while it's tracing off of the edge of the screen. But that's really cool. We can, we can see the, the beam going left to right and up and down. That's awesome. That's cool. I'm, I'm just, man, that is just epic. That's really, really cool. All right, well, let's, let's speed it back up again. That's about 500 hertz there. And look at that. What a beautiful sine wave coming out of this thing. I am super happy with how this oscilloscope is working. I, I could not be happier. For a random eBay purchase, man, this is just epic. And now that both of these are warmed up, it is absolutely beautiful on the inside. It's not as precise as a modern oscilloscope, but man, it's just so beautiful and so cool. And with the tubes glowing and oh, it's just such a, such a cool piece of technology to have in the workshop. I'm just, I'm over the moon with this thing. I am so, so excited that this thing is here and working as well as it is. So there we go. I'm going to keep uh, playing with this, changing it around, trying to learn the ins and outs and the special quirks of this little oscilloscope here. And uh, well, I, I guess I'll see y'all in the next episode.